spoke uh, to, again, we're at Shoshana Chatfield, and as well as uh, we have here my Homeland Security Advisor who is in communications with Homeland Security and the Department of Defense uh, at that level. And uh, the, the statement we want to make, make very clear to the public that there has been no change in the threat level to Guam. There's been a lot of rhetoric coming out, and it's important to, to uh, uh, bring that message out to the people of Guam. This, this is not a time to panic. Uh, these are many statements that are being made uh, out there by a very bellicose leader, but at this point, there has been no change in the security situation here in Guam. Uh, I've gotten assurances, again, from all levels, both local command and Washington, D.C., uh, that this island will be defended and is, uh, and, and the United States uh, military has their forces ready to protect and defend not only Guam but all American interest uh, in this region and the homeland. Uh, and with that, I, uh, I'll look towards any comments or questions unless, George, you want to add on anything to that. No, sir, not this time. Okay, and that's my statement. So, Question? any comments or any questions? Please sit down, folks. Yeah, yes, Clint. Uh, are we aware or not of the capabilities of North Korea as far as what's, they've been doing a lot of testing lately. Mm -hmm. uh, they claim to be improving their missile capabilities. And there's some reports also that they now have a missile that they can fit a nuclear warhead onto mm -hmm. that could reach Guam. Do you know if any of that's true? At this point, as what has been provided to me by uh, federal officials, again, both local uh, and in Washington, is that threat level remains the same. Uh, there is a lot of rhetoric that is going on right now, both uh, by the North Korean leader and also by some of the reports that are coming out with the national and the international media. Uh, but this, this, this point, to this point, it has been made very clear to me that the defenses of this island uh, and the perceived threats, uh, there has been no change of status. And that our, the defense forces of the United States and its allies uh, are prepared to, to deal with any contingency. Well, and, and HSA, I think you can speak to the fact that, um, you know, the, the events of North Korea, the activities of North Korea are something that are being monitored uh, by both HS, by uh, Homeland Security uh, and Department of Defense. We, we continuously monitor the situation, not just in North Korea, but uh, around the, the area, the region. Um, we are, like the governor mentioned, we are in close coordination, not only with our local federal and military partners, but also the national partnership. So uh, that uh, the perceived uh, new threat uh, is just that. So uh, we've been told that it would take roughly 14 to 15 minutes for a missile to reach Guam if one were to ever be launched from North Korea. So what would be the response of the government if that were to ever happen? Again, we do have an emergency response time. Remember, this is not the first threat that's been uh, uh, put on Guam. I think this is the first solo threat, uh, but several years back, uh, we had the, the, the threat made by the, the Korean uh, leader, uh, Kim Jong-un, on, on Guam, and also American military bases uh, in Japan as well. Uh, and that is why it is so important to have this coordinated effort uh, with a civil administration and with the Defense Department. I think if there's any one American community uh, that where there is an integration, communication, dialogue, and coordination uh, when it comes to, to some sort of threat, and whether it is natural, such as our typhoons, or man-made, such as a, uh, a crazy guy from North Korea, uh, that this community uh, has that integration, has that coordination. And so I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yes. We, we have a really uh, great relationship, uh, a close coordination uh, relationship with the local military and the federal our federal partners. Uh, in fact, I, I, I would boast that it is much better than any of the other, uh, the other 50 states. In and and to, reiter uh, to reiterate, again, this, we, we, this situation occurred, this heightened status as a result of what was going on in national and international media. This happened several years ago. And, and with that, there has been this coordination. Uh, and we, uh, there are the links uh, that have been established, and now it's important now to, to continue to, to uh, uh, work those links, but if any type of, of, of uh, uh, launch were to occur uh, in the North Korean Peninsula, uh, once uh, that was made known, 
it would uh, be made known nearly immediately uh, to both the local defense uh, uh, commander as well as the civil administrator, civil leader, which is myself. That is how close the coordination is uh, between uh, this civil government and the Department of Defense, particularly to any type of attack uh, coming from Asia. Much of the news reports, uh, this is all news reports, uh, specifically in South Korea, there were those who reported that they heard the officials in North Korea talk about the threat. Is that being taken seriously at all? Is the White House taking that, that news report seriously? And are they investigating the validity of that report? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Sean, I'm not familiar with what type of comments came out of South oh, Korea. Oh, South Korea uh, that reported first that North Korea, the North Korean officials were talking about. About the statements about Guam? Yes. Yeah, I, I again, I, I'm sure, right, a lot of things are happening, and because of how modern technology is, they, they, they're real time. So the same as folks such as me uh, finding this information on the news uh, in the early morning, some of this stuff is hitting uh, leaders in Washington, D.C. at the same time as well. And it could be a report that comes out from South Korea. And that's why it's just important for all of us to understand too, as all this thing comes out in the media, that we understand that you know um, we should all take it calmly as well. And some of it is bellicose statements made. Some of them are, are uh, unsubstantiated uh, uh, media reports as well. So it's important that that for us uh, to to uh, have a dialogue, communication. For me as a governor, uh, it's important to to uh, have my my. My focal point, the in, my, my main interest is the health and, sa health and safety of the people of Guam. Uh, so we have our local uh, uh, civil administration, the government of Guam, uh, and the certain agencies that we have, have under our purview, myself, uh, as well as our partners here in the community, such as the Defense Department, uh, again, uh, rear, uh, headed by Rear Admiral uh, Shoshana uh, Chatfield. So we are constantly in dialogue. Uh, it was important this morning uh, for me to contact and, and, and have discussions with representatives from the White House and from the National Security Agency. And there is a harmony uh, of, of uh, uh, I guess what you would call the communications and the, and the facts coming to us. And that is at this point there is no uh, increased threat uh, to this island. And uh, we will be providing more information as it becomes available. So, so I, I just, I think it's important that, I, I think it's important for all of us uh, as we hear and see all this stuff coming out in the news, and I'm talking the international news, that at the same time we see and we hear what's going on from the news, we also uh, get the, the, the actual information out that, that is coming from official channels, and whether it's from our local government uh, or the federal government, uh, or from other governments such as uh, the, the government of Japan or, or the government of South Korea. So, uh, you said that there's no increase, uh, uh, no increase to our threat level. What is our current threat level? Uh, no. okay. It's still the same. It's, it's, there's normal. It's normal. So it seems there's been a lot of communication between local and federal entities. Uh, but what about for people in the community who are maybe concerned about these recent threats? What would you tell them on what they can do? Enjoy paradise. Uh, don't, don't worry about this guy. Okay, that's what the government is saying. The, the, the message is that it, we, we don't want folks to panic, and, and if we do get more folks, information, we will. We will let and you I know. think it's important. You know, um, there there is one American community that is prepared for any contingency. It's Guam. As I look at you folks here, we've had uh, earthquakes of 8.2. We've had super typhoons. Uh, hitting nearly 200 miles per hour. Everybody knows here, even though we, uh, you know, uh, we have an emergency preparedness plan, everyone knows how to prepare for any type of contingency, whether it's natural uh, or man-made. But I don't even want to get us to that level right now because we're not even at typhoon condition three, if you want to say that, or typhoon, we're, we're, if, I guess if you were to equate things, how we are in condition readiness four, that's kind of like how we are with the situation uh, with North Korea. There's just a lot of rhetoric that has happened real quickly and it has hit us, and I'm talking uh, not only this community, but, but many folks that, that are watching or, uh, the news on TV, and whether it's international or national. Now you've got to separate what you're seeing happening with reality of, of, the, uh, uh, 
with the situation and with all the information that is given me, with, to me, there has been no change in status in regards to the, the, the threats to Guam. Uh, there's no increased threat uh, in the military here in Guam, no, there, it, nor there is any increased threat uh, to the people of Guam from the civilian side. But we will be having this constant communication with the local command and also uh, with the federal government of anything, uh, if anything changes. And that's something I, 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 I commit to the people and commit to the media that we're going to get information real time. Once we get it, we'll get it to you folks. Mr. Charpers, could you speak to the missile defense capabilities of Guam? Is the FAD still here? What other missile defense capabilities lie in between Guam and North Korea? Okay, I'm, I'm going to speak to the unclassified ones, I, and, and you can, you know, all this info can just, you can go online and get, get uh, find out what it is. It's, the, the bigger umbrella is called the National Missile Defense. So not only is the FAD, which is located up in, in Anderson Air Force Base, permanently stationed here because of what happened in April 2013, but that capability still exists and it's the condition of that uh, is highly it's re ready. Okay, so that's one missile system. The other, there's right around the Sea of Japan, they have the Aegis warships. Uh, those are also uh, you know, part of the National Missile Defense. There's other, if there's other systems out there, uh, which I am not at liberty to talk about, but you know, like Oya tells me, all those put together, you know, 0. 0.00001 yeah. chance of that missile getting through that, yeah. that layer. So, so, like the governor said, we're on condition mm -hmm. four. To me, we're on condition mm -hmm. five. Go, go out and barbecue, <laughs> have fun, you know, things have enjoy been, life. Things have not changed. Again, talking to officials both in Washington, D.C., Guam, there is a uh, there is a um, layered uh, defense umbrella uh, to Guam and and to the United States. So with that layered defense umbrella, uh, the the again f those that are uh, of uh, those responsibilities feel very confident on on the security of Guam, and that's why there has been no change uh, to to any type of security threat level to this territory. What would you just say to those people who feel that these uh, threats from North Korea might spur anti-military sentiment because they feel that Guam is a target because of the military bases here? I, I think what is happening now uh, uh, and the, the heightened uh, awareness of Guam, particularly as a target by North Korea, for those that ha have anti-militaristic uh, um, their, their philosophy is, in, in, is uh, or their, their cause is being anti-military, I think that will probably uh, keep them in that direction. Uh, yet at the same time, there are those that have a, a, sto a strong backing towards a military presence here. Um, that will also fortify their uh, reason for why we need a strong military here. So as to how people's attitudes will change, whether you're anti-military or pro-military, I think the issue here uh, on North Korea, because it deals uh, with uh, the military uh, and warfare component, uh, it, will, it would fortify either position. We have time for two more questions. Okay. How ready would you say Guam is for a potential threat? like a potential missile strike from North Korea. Are you talking about the military side or the government of Guam or the, the, the civilian side? From the government of Guam. Yeah, we, we are, like the governor mentioned, we have an all hazards plan. Uh, we've been, the Guam is very resilient. We've, you know, we've survived earthquakes, typhoons, even airline crash, crash, crashes. So you know, we, we are very resilient when we are ready. Yeah, uh, folks, and again, We've, we've gone through wars, earthquakes, and typhoons. And uh, obviously, there's no other American community, short of, of, of Pearl Harbor that was attacked, uh, you know, that, that has gone through wars such as Guam. But if you look at recent history, you could go over the last typhoon, uh, where you know, usually, if you see a, a, a major typhoon, a category three or four hit Guam, that uh, you see recovery uh, within hours uh, of, uh, uh, its departure from the island. Uh, I, I can state that if you take a look at some other states, 
uh, where there has been a hurricane that has hit ground zero there. Uh, and the, the amount of time it took, not, not only for preparedness, but also the aftermath of recovery, I, I would put Guam ahead of any state or territory in terms of preparedness for any type of disaster, natural or man-made. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Okay. All right, George. Oh, I did mention the civil, and we are, after talking with the Admiral, uh, with, with this briefing, we are setting up again this... Uh, uh, Unified coordination group. So these folks will be constantly in dialogue, constant communication, comparing notes, uh, and, and getting information real time, uh, where, again, we have a unified approach uh, towards any contingency uh, that hits the island of Guam. Again, that's the, the civil side as well as the military side. Right? Take care. Right. Y'all. Thank you. Take care, sir. Good day, everyone. Issa Baza here. So we just wrapped up a press conference with the governor, and right next to him you saw the Guam Homeland Security Advisor, George Charper. So we'll have more on this story tonight on Primetime.